2022 North Carolina Band Masters Association Eastern District Honor Band. So this evening we want to recognize 10 band members from Topsville High School who were selected to be part of the North Carolina Band Masters Association Eastern District Honors Band. We need Jasmine Randall, Jasmine Holcomb, Gabriel Ball, Emerson Thompson, Shane Hughes, Jessica Holcomb, Daniel Lee, Eli, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Liam Courtright, Colin Jawaski, and Thomas Papaki. Papaki. I'm phonetic. Say it again. Papaki. Papaki. Okay, I got it. That's a lot easier than what I was trying to say. <laughs> All right, so we wanted to recognize these students last month, but because they are so accomplished, at the time of the, of the March meeting, they were prepared to go to Disney World, where they took part in the 50th anniversary celebration where they all participate in the parades there. So if you guys know that, that's a large, that's a large event, a big deal. I also want to mention that two members of the group, Jessica and Daniel, have placed for the state band that's taking place at the end of the month. Yeah. So, Everybody good? Parents? Everybody got their pictures? All right. Good. seconds to clear. We're now moving into our public comments section. Uh, Pender County Board of Education welcomes comments from our parents, students, and community. The public comment period is open for members of the public, including parents and students, to voice compliments, concerns, or complaints about the performance of school personnel, implementation of board policy, the quality of educational programs, or school facilities. Each person is granted three minutes for his or her presentation. This portion of the meeting is for the board of interest to the public. However, obscene, vulgar, or profane statements and statements reasonably perceived to be disruptive or imminently threatening to the orderly operation of the meeting shall not be permitted. So the first on our list is Mr. Robert Kirkland. Of course, I do thank the board for giving me the opportunity to speak. This, this is the first time I had an opportunity to speak before an elected board. Then the court many time has to speak before the judge. I'd like to say good afternoon to you all. And I'm here to speak on behalf of Anna Dell at elementary school. I was an attendee there and graduated from there. And and of course, I believe that at Topsy High School. But I, I'm here to an effort to support the, re, the change back to Annadale Elementary School. And the reason for that is we can't get in our heads why the name was changed in the beginning. Because it was, it was mentioned sometime back in the late 70s or early 80s that all schools in Penda County would no longer be named after persons, but in, instead of name uh, about places. Well, the Allendale happened to be in the place. It used to be an Allendale station that named that place was Allendale. But as, as time went on, it seems as though we did get a school named after a person that's high press, senior high school. So what happened in that situation? How did that name uh, get there? If everything is supposed to be named after the location to where it was. You know, I believe that during the time that the name was changed was after 
Tops Elementary was to be closed from Tops of School and instead of uh, allowed An Annandale to continue to be Annandale School, it was, it was primarily occupied by black students. And I don't believe at that time, back then, people wanted their children going to school that had been uh, predominantly dominated by black students. So therefore, they changed the top elementary and said that uh, all schools in the area and the county would be named after the location. But if that was the case, then why did high, high trust school get placed where it is? And that's the question I have for the board tonight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Patricia Coolidge. Patricia Coolidge. Cheryl Groves. State your name because we bypassed you, so I called you twice. Outside. I'm Patricia College. <laughs> Good evening. There's been a lot of controversy in our community about books that are in our public schools, particularly in our middle schools. I'd like to help clear up the misinformation. Pender County School Board Education Policy Search is for the Follett, Follett.com, F O L L E T T.com. Anyone can take their phones out, research a particular book, which would be called George. George is a book that has explicit materials in it, sexual material in it, and also gives a explicit content. I'm a little upset tonight because I was accused all week long online of making something up that's not true. So I'd like to know if Follett is a research center where we can contact the books. This book describes graphic, sexual, explicit content. Now you can read the book and visit your libraries to read and determine whether or not this is pornography. I've experienced some books on the website, sometimes it appears to be in, and then it's not there, and then two days later it will come out, and it will be listed in K through elementary schools. So be diligent, repetitive in your search. Books are ordered by the, and recommended from the Follett by our media coordinators. I'm not used to talking to public, so I'm sorry. By our media coordinators and our librarians. And the librarians review those books and make a determination to put it on the shelf. We're not capable of reading every single book. We know that. But in some of these books are so explicit sex scenes that we have to stop twice and have somebody review these books to ensure it's lawful. I want to thank each and every one of you for your due diligence and your transparency. It was awfully hard to find that transparency, but I did find it. It was a deep dive. Again, Follett, F-O-L-L-E-T-T dot com. You can search, um, one book in particular is George, J-O-E-R-G-E. -E. I suggest if you can order the book online, possibly read it or go to the libraries. They are there listed currently in West Pender Middle, Burgon Middle, and Topsail Middle Schools. I didn't go further with the search, there's anything in all the schools. Um, last week, I looked up Gender Queer Book. Actually, I'd done that probably about six months ago when I found it, so I ordered the book at home, and it came through Amazon. When I opened the book, I nearly got nauseated. So after looking at that, I looked at a Disney, uh, Destiny, Destiny site, what's before Follett. So as they revealed that we understood, our particular groups understood that Destiny was a research where we can find where these books were, it was taken down and changed over to Follett. When it happens again, and when it does happen again, we will find that link, we will notify you, 
and we want to shut down these inappropriate books coming into our schools. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheryl Groves. Ms. Cole, your time's... That's just holding that for me. I'd like you to... Just... Well, you can prop it against the front and have a seat. For years, my standard method of masturbation was stuffing a sock into the front of my pants and manipulating the bulge. Memorably, I got off once while driving just by rubbing the front of my jeans and imagining getting a blowjob. job. When I finally got old enough to not be embarrassed to talk to my sister, it never occurred to you to put something in your vagina, not even a finger? It really didn't. See, we never tasted yourself. <sighs> Mr. George, uh, uh, I, do, I do believe we've crossed the line. In oh, really? But this is in our school. Thank you, Ms. So Ms. if my kid can't listen to it, you're an adult? Ms. Gross, thank you. No. 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 Ms. Gross, thank no. you. Pass her time. This is the visual I've been picturing, but Ms. I can't Gross. feel anything. It's a strap-on. I can go on and on, but I won't. I'll digress. And I'll get to some really good points. Department of Justice does the Miller test. Does it meet art, politics, or is it scientific? If you look at the board, I need my board. There's a grown man with a beard with what appears to be a young adult child. Second degree sexual exploitation under Chapter 14, Article 26 of North Carolina is anybody who dispenses a book like this to a minor. And under federal law, a minor is anyone under the age of 17. Third degree sexual exploitation of a minor is the same, a little bit weaker, but it characterizes pornography and obscenity as just the mere depiction of a child in a sexual act or a sexual act or expulsion, which I believe we talked about with the taste test. Harmful to minors under Chapter 14, Article 26. The quality of material performance that depicts sexually explicit, explicit nudity or sexual activity and that is taken as a whole has the fi fi ugh, following characteristics. The average adult person applying contemporary community standards, which is part of the Miller test, would find that the depiction of sexually explicit nudity or sexual activity in the material performance <laughs> is offensive to prevailing standards in the adult community. I think we'd agree that that's offensive because I was shut down by Mr. McPherson. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm sure that every adult here would agree. Now I'm going Thank to tell you Ms. something. As a peer Thank support you. specialist, Somebody looks at this book that was sexually molested, it just would trigger them. I support you. everybody's right to live a normal functioning life. But this Thank you, Ms. Gross. is not acceptable. Your time has expired. Thank you. Federal law, state law, 15 to 20 years minimum. Laura Conway. Hey there. My name is Laura Conway, and I am the parent of a third grader at Surf City Elementary. I thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. I am very fortunate to have a flexible schedule that allows me to volunteer at my daughter's school. And with that being said, I have unfortunately seen the cleanliness of the school deteriorate as the school year has progressed. 
I was one of the parents that chose to keep my child at home during the pandemic for virtual learning. I did this to keep her safe from all of the germs that were floating around the school. After having seen how unsanitary our only four-year-old school has become in the last year, I would opt to do virtual learning again, knowing the unhealthy conditions she is exposed to Monday through Friday. I have taken pictures at several time points across several days in the last month to show some of the filth that I have seen during my volunteer hours. I will gladly share these with anyone who would like to see how disgusting the school has become. Some of the pictures include mold on several of the bathroom floors and walls, including staff bathrooms. Several bathrooms have missing soap dispensers. The wall mounts are there, but the actual dispensers are not attached. Soap dispensers that do not have soap in them. No toilet paper in several bathrooms, also including a staff bathroom in the front office area. Trash scattered across the media center floor first thing in the morning that should have been vacuumed the previous evening. Dirt on sinks first thing in the morning when they should have been cleaned the night before. Dirt and spilled liquid that has dried on the walls, not necessarily in the bathroom, but on the hallway walls. I also have a picture of teachers having to begin their day scrubbing prior to the arrival of children because the cleaning was not completed the night before. We want our teachers to focus their time on teaching our kids and not sweeping the floors. In the last two weeks, I have seen a slight, I mean very slight, improvement in the conditions. However, I do speculate that this may be due to the fact that a PTA meeting was planned where 30 plus parents were expected in attendance. These are just a few of my concerns I wanted to bring to your attention. I myself am not a parent that cleans and wipes down every crack and crevice, but I do make sure that my child lives in a clean home. And unfortunately, I drive her from a clean home to a soiled school five days a week, and I would like to know what's being done to correct this. Thank you. Thank you. Glorious Levin. Good evening. My name is Glorious Levin. I'm from over in the Hampstead area. In fact, I was a teacher over there for 34 years in those schools over there. And I'm here to help support our school name being changed back to Annandale to represent us. There's five schools over there. So there's Topsa High School, Topsa Middle School, Topsa Elementary School, North Topsa, South Topsa, and there one named Surf City. And even named the school that was Annandale to Topsa Elementary. That's the only thing that we want so that our children will see the schools that we attend and so that we can have something. Because I noticed that the other schools in the county that was built in 1955, one in Willow, the other one in Maple Hill, those schools just over there caking dust. And I was wondering why. You know, and I, I think it's because they say that the whites did not want their children to go into the, the schools where the blacks were. That's the thing that I heard. I don't know how true or whatever that is. But the thing is, the school is still there. It's the only thing they added other parts to it. Because I have told in every last one of those schools over there, just about it, in top school. Even that big high school that I rode by going to my high school when I was in high school, that I never thought I would teach there, but I did. And so this is the only reason we're here tonight, to get the school name changed to Annabelle. On the little block out front, it has Annabelle Elementary School. And that's the only thing we're asking for. Is that too much to ask for? <coughs> So that's my reason here to help support that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Dr. Jotty Batts. 
Good evening. Yeah, um, those who came before me, well, first of all, my name is Dr. Johnny Bass, and I came from those one room schools, and as we went through Anna Dale. And you have heard uh, them talk about pretty much the background of those schools. But I want to tell you about how those schools were so productive, in spite of being, them being one room schools and going through Anna Dale with little resources. Um, out of those schools came, I can think of at least two NFL football players. Um, one was with Orlando, and one was out west somewhere. And also there were people who became full bird colonels and up for generals. They came out of those one-room schools and came through Annadale. And we also have an ambassador, Mary R. Sharpless, and part of Highway 17 is named from her. And, uh, and I am a physicist, and I work at a lot of universities, even the one here in Wilmington, as well as NASA, and, um, and did a lot of work at a lot of research places. And out of those schools also came chemists who worked at the DuPont Chemical Company. And there are, many, there are doctors who, I, think, I can think of one who <coughs> practices now in Delaware, several of them. <clears throat> And also, there were a lot of engineers. And it's very ironic that, I think there may be one sitting in here, but the first uh, class to, to graduate from, who went through Annabelle to graduate from Topsail High, I think that year, they, maybe they did have valedictorians and salutatorians, but those two girls were, who had the great average to be valedictorian and salutatorian, but they did not give them that that, that opportunity. Uh, but believe it or not, those young ladies finished and they went on to be, one was head of a whole wing of the Social Security Department, <coughs> which is in Baltimore, its headquarters is in Baltimore. And the other one, she had three sons, and one of them later became a valedictorian, Torian out of Topsail High. And as a matter of fact, all of her sons are engineers. Uh, in places like Atlanta and, and New York. <clears throat> and um, so it's, I would say, it's sort of like a miracle. Those teachers and those schools had to perform. They had to sort of make miracles out of nothing, and that they did. So what I would like to say is that I think you should consider and sort of give them some respect because they said they were like tra trailblazers, at, or we said that. We were like trailblazers coming out of that school. So um, we think you should give us some consideration and some respect because we feel we deserve it. Because we have you, Dr. Matt. Reach major heights coming out of those schools. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Matt. <laughs> Kenneth Keith. Time was up before you started, right? That's right, yeah. Actually, right out. Uh, well, we say uh, good evening to the board, superintendent, uh, special lady, Ms. Betsy Chestnut. Uh, I'm here, this is the third time I'm here, and I'm here to support the group in reference to the Annadale School. And I, I was on the east side of the county, but I went to uh, Rosenwald School. And uh, I'm here because I understand and know the importance of those schools. Um, the reason they want the they want the name changed. They don't want the school back, uh, and, and that's what's important. Now, uh, ten months ago, Mr. Garrison sent a letter to the board. It's been ten months, and he has had no response at all from the board members. What they're asking for, uh, as courtesy and respect from each one of you, if, if you don't want it, tell tell them that you don't want it. But tell them why. Don't just stall it, Senate. Mr. George, these are, these are your people. And there's a whole bunch of them out there. Uh, that tops of Hampstead side is your side. And let me get one thing straight so, so there's no confusion. All this garbage that's going on about uh, critical race theory and all that stuff. This has absolutely nothing to do with all that, which to me is, is political 
waste anyway. Uh, but this has nothing to do with that. This has to do if that was uh, one of the uh, uh, equalization schools that was built. In the state of North Carolina, it was 145 to 50 years after the state of North Carolina started funding public education before that school was built in Hampstead. It, it has a historical purpose, and that's what they want to take and preserve. Uh, a lot has changed since I went to that little two-room school myself. Uh, Penn County Schools, I'm, I stand proud uh, as a father. I had two children graduate from Penn County Schools, uh, went to uh, Mount Coma, West Penn, Penn High, graduated. Both of them went to UNC Chapel Hill and graduated with honors. So I know what Penn County Schools is capable of doing. I've experienced it myself. Uh, I'm not knocking the schools. What was going on back then, uh, you all know as well as I know the reason why things were done. I don't have to get into all that, you know. And uh, so I'm asking you to, uh, each one of you, uh, Mr. Smith, Mr. Hall, Mr. George, Ms. Fontana, and, and you too, uh, to, uh, Communicate with them. Mr. Garrison should have had some kind of response back 10 months later. <coughs> he said absolutely nothing. Silence is unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Uh, I encourage you to get with them, meet with them, but actually, I encourage you to make that change. Uh, see how Pope was changed back when I talked to the principal this evening. Just, uh, everything's going fine. Names don't teach, teachers teach. Thank you, Mr. Keith. Moving along, Wall of Fame uh, project, Dr. Hill. Yes, sir. Yes. There you go. Hey, uh, Tammy's here. Yes, Tammy Parker, Miss Tammy Perry will be here tonight to speak with you from the PEP. All right, the board, I know you guys already know these faces and already know uh, what the PEP is, but the Pender Education Partnership is our one nonprofit support group that actually is very positive for the school system and, and raises money for scholarships as well as teacher grants. So tonight they have a proposal they want to talk more about and I'll shut up and let you guys explain it. Well, thank you for the opportunity um, to speak to you tonight about a proposed um, wall of fame for Pender County Schools. We would like um, to honor the alumni of Pender County Schools. We feel that uh, by honoring outstanding alumni with their achievements, that this would um, not only honor them, but honor the district on what they have produced. It will also stand as an opportunity for our students, our current stu students, to see what is possible. And so we have drafted uh, Wall of Fame nominations, and I can give you copies if you would like. Um, we have solicited for nominations. And we did get a response. And so we, of course, we would fund all of this. We're asking the board to consider donating wall space so that we can create a wall of fame with photos, class of graduation, and also to honor educators who not necessarily graduated from Pender County Schools, but spent the majority of their careers as educators in Pender County Schools. Um, we have been joined in this endeavor by the Rotary Club of Coastal Pender County, and they have donated to help pay for the mountings uh, with the photos of our wall of fame. We'd like to do this every year. I know that some school districts across the country do this every year. Some opt to do it every other year. I think Pender County has enough outstanding graduates to do it every year, but that would be entirely up to the board. And Tammy Paris is the president of the uh, Pender Education Partnership, and I'm the vice chair, so you wanna say anything? I just want to say that this is a project that um, has come to fruition since last year. We've been trying to make it happen. And it has become adamantly clear that we have some outstanding individuals that not only came from 
Pender County school systems, but have either spent time in Pender County or have returned back to Pender County to give back to the community. And it's just a way to recognize their achievements. But again, um, to back what Tammy said up, it definitely inspires our young people to understand that anything is possible. I'm sure Dr. Johnny had no idea that he was going to be a physicist and work at NASA. Maybe you did, Dr. Johnny, I don't know, but I'm just saying that what an inspiration, you know, to the community. What an inspiration to the Topsail community, but also to Pender County altogether. Um, our nominations, we have some, some fantastic folks that we really think need some recognition, and we would like to recognize them all. Um, it was very clear that there's a diverse background of these nominees and we think for this first year we need to just we need to nominate them all there's really no way to choose who a standout is because they're all standouts would you like me to read some of the names <coughs> on here well i did not know <coughs> the ones that were nominated and they were um, they were approved by our partners mm -hmm. with the coastal pender um, we haven't officially notified them, but if you would like us to read those things, we'd be glad to do that. I'd be happy to do that. It's probably best not to if yeah, I haven't been a surprise. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 Well, because um, this is being broadcast live on YouTube. And well, you know what? You can give us a written copy of it if you like later. Go big or go home, because I think this is the appropriate time to do this. Um, we have received nominations uh, for this inaugural Wall of Fame, and if you approve, we would like to recognize Dr. Johnny Batts, mm -hmm. Ambassador, uh, Ambassador Matty Sharpless, Superior Court Judge and author Gary Trawick, and educators Ms. Andrews and Mary Gore Jordan for our very first Wall of Fame um, premiere, and we would like you to support that wholeheartedly. <laughs> It's not our pet board. These are nominations that are made by other civic organizations and anybody that wants to make a nomination, the application is filled out by the person that is nominating the individual. So I think it goes without saying that, I mean, this is a community driven effort and pet just wants to get behind it and put it where it needs to be, which is on the wall. Thank you all. Any questions, board members? So we don't have, there's not an action item for us. This was just information, so okay. we will. Well, envision, <laughs> follow, follow me, Brad. Envision either an acrylic, something you can see through that has pictures with the bio of these individuals with maybe a little engravable something on the bottom of it. Um, and these five outstanding individuals being the very first ones to go on the wall. I think so you want us to approve to approve the actual work, the wall, the physical change, not the names, correct? Right. No, we don't have any That's your job. Yeah. That's correct. The place to put so you need us to approve the, yeah. Can we do that right now with the agenda change? You can add it to the action you agenda. You can add it to the action agenda, and because we're in information, you'd have to address it. All right, then I'll make a motion that we however you need to state it, add that to the action agenda is... Build the wall? Yes. <laughs> Build the wall. Right the wall. <laughs> so that would need to be 10.7. That, that, that would be the motion. So the motion is he, we, do, we need a second and a vote. I'll second. You all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you very we much. And while we got to Tammy's dairy, there is a Tammy who's also just FYI while we got her in front of us. There is a recognition here for the North Carolina Volunteer uh, the Governor. Uh, and, uh, she recently received that honor of Pender County Representative. So she is the volunteer. Right. So, um, 8.2 Media and Technology Advisory Committee's discussion. Dr. Hill. Yeah. Dr. Bloomer Wright's got this one, sir. He put your name on it. I know he did. Mr. 
Chair, members of the board, um, want to discuss just real quickly and briefly um, the community, uh, community media advisory uh, committee proposal. Um, in your packet materials, you of course have the two current policies, uh, 3200 regarding selection of instructional materials and 3210, which if there's an objection, the next process is, and that is really at the site level and the way that it moves up. Um, what we would like to discuss is next steps. So specific to the media advisory committee uh, for the community, um, in discussion with legal counsel, um, there is a document that is put out by NCBPI regarding selection of instructional materials, um, and there is a portion of that that talks about specifically with adherence to general statute um, that um, we would like to kind of follow through with, and that is establishing a community media advisory committee um, that is appointed by the local board um, to investigate and evaluate um, any objections of instructional materials pursuant to board policy 3210, rental inspection of and objection to instructional materials. And so this just details the process that uh, we would like to see come to fruition and then is if a person who originates an objection at the building level is not satisfied, then submits it um, to the superintendent uh, with a countdown clock of one week, then the superintendent then will access the committee media advisory committee, um, and then they'll review those processes. Uh, keeping in mind that according to the general statute, the local board at all times has the sole authority, and this is very explicitly stated, has the sole authority and discretion to determine whether a challenge has merit and whether challenged material should be retained or removed. So that is something that is always in your authority and that is written into general statute. Um, in terms of uh, selecting a standing committee uh, that the board would uh, choose, they would consist of the following members. So superintendent or uh, his or her designee and specifically the appropriate grade span instructional directors uh, because it deals specifically with instructional and supplementary instructional materials. Uh, the media director or his designee, um, that would be the director of digital learning and media. The technology director, or his or her designee, which is the director of technology services, for obvious reasons. Um, a media coordinator from each level of school, so elementary, middle, and high, and region within the district. So, um, parse that out so we have full representation of media coordinators. Um, the same process, specific principles, so each level and region. Then a parent or community member from each level of school and region in the district, again, the same process, and then um, a high school student from each high school in the district, because we are speaking about instructional materials that are aimed at students. So uh, following through with this process, we would like to further recommend that the chair of this committee be appointed by the board, and the chair and all committee members shall act, of course, in the capacities for one year from the time of appointment, and um, we are currently looking through training processes to make sure that best practices are used in making good and meaningful choices through this process. And so um, the full document is available online um, for you to see, just kind of work through the whole thing. But that particular portion, that's what we're looking at. Is there any questions, board members? Um, so currently the way that books are selected for our libraries right now is there is a committee that um, what is our current situation with book selection and so that is all done at the site level through the MTAC committee indeed and who is all on that committee so if I'm remembering the policy off the top of my head that would be um, the coordinator principal administrator um, and then teacher and parent representation. So very similar to the type of representation that we'd be setting on school and permitting. Okay. So the parent, well, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, so the parent representation on that, would that be one parent from each grade? I don't think it's articulated to that degree, but that, that can happen. Um, I don't know 
I don't. I guess my thoughts are when you're choosing kind of supplementary materials. Mm -hmm. I guess when you're going through that process, the larger the committee becomes to kind of like look through those processes, the more movie it can become. But um, that's actually. I would like to have lots of parent involvement on this particular committee, um, you know, because this is the beginning of the book selection process, and of course I know that is something else that all, the entire board would have to discuss, discuss. But that that was just my two cents. Thank you, Ms. Burns. Mr. Hall. Yeah. No, she had, it got answered. <laughs> Is there any other questions, board members? Thank you, sir. Dr. Bracey, Cross Program of Consolidated Monitoring and Review Information. And welcome. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for um, allowing me to present tonight. Actually, it should have been in recognition as well because that's my opportunity tonight is to really highlight and um, highlight some staff members who have done a great job with a cross-program consolidated um, review. If you look on the slide, it says Pender County participated in a cross-program consolidated monitoring re review of the following programs. So at the time of the uh, monitoring visit, they, they looked at Title I, Title II, Title III, Title IV migrants. And the process was an off-site review of documentation, followed by a series of virtual <coughs> interviews with multiple stakeholder groups, ended with an exit interview with the superintendent and program leads, and later received a final report document in the rating areas of either meets requirements, meets requirements with recommendations or findings. Always when you recognize adults, you do not want to leave anyone out. So this is the part that I hope I'm not leaving anyone out. But I know um, Ms. D. Owens, I want you to come forward. Ms. D. is in charge of Title I. Dr. V, you join us up here with Title II. Sir, yes, you join as well. Title three is um, Dr. Aiken. I'm going to be in his um, position tonight. Um, Lindsay, will you join me as well? Is Lindsay Bloch here? Lindsay, you come up. <laughs> Title four is also Dr. B, correct? Yes, sir. And Margaret and Laura, thank you. You all will come up. I can't begin to tell you how important this is. And I can't, it, it's fun to be able to stand before you as an outsider looking in at the great work that's happening in your district. Because it, it's an honor for me to be able to say this, but they did the work. And the outcome with they met requirements with no findings. So this is great work on their behalf. And I do think that they deserve a great um, big recognition round. <laughs> Also, it, this could not happen without um, parent representation at the schools as well and um, principals. So any of those folks that are here? Teachers? Um, Title I leads. Where's Ms. Holt? Ms. Cheryl Holt? Yeah. If we could all come up, I want you all to get a picture together, all of us. Ms. Ryderbaugh, I think you were involved with this. Yes, Ms. Ryderbaugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it was time. This, 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 this is our federal program is meeting all the requirements. Board members, do y'all mind coming and joining us? Dr. Hill. No. 
now. <laughs> Thank you, um, Dr. Moore. Turn the camera on for the little side. It's okay, you can move it off. <laughs> <laughs> Point four policy seventy four zero one duty to drive a school bus. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, this is for your information. There's a proposed revision to uh, board policy seventy four zero one, which is the duty to drive a school bus by non-certified personnel. I'm not going to uh, read the entire policy to you, but highlight the, the changes that uh, we would like to propose. Uh, policy 7401 was established in 1997 and was last revised in 2015. Uh, concerns non-certified staff duty to drive the school bus. The proposed revisions uh, clarifies the process for employees to obtain and maintain their CDO license, which is required for driving the school bus, establishes a clear timeline uh, for them to do so, and puts in place a procedure for medical exemptions if they are so needed. The reason the uh, revisions are necessary is because the DOT has changed uh, the requirements for school bus drivers and it now includes that they must maintain a DOT medical card uh, uh, for them to be able to drive. What I'd like for you to do is consider the uh, policy over the next little while and get back to the uh, cabinet uh, by April the 26th so that we can uh, put it on the agenda for a second reading of May 10th. Any question, board members? Has it got any easier to get the bus driver training? It? Uh, uh, it has gotten easier. Um, uh, the, the training part has they, they're allowing classes to be done online instead of in person. And um, Mr. Smith and the transportation department have worked really, really hard at making that process easier for uh, people to, go, to get through. Because it used to take a year to get from the time you took the class. To it only took you six months, Mr. George. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. LaFonna, just have a question. Do you know, I know a few of our principals are certified drive school buses. Um, do you know roughly the number? Um, and if you don't, that's fine or off time. I, I do not know, but Mr. Smith might know that number. Um, if, uh, yeah. I'm just, just as a curiosity. <laughs> We have one principal, one AP, I know that has their bus license at Driven. I know Heidi Trask, principal, does. So, okay. And Ms. Brown and Rocky Point will drive if needed. Thank you. Absolutely. Is that all that one? That's all for that one. Yes, all right, sir. so 8.5 AFS new manager and introduction. At, at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Mark Thompson from AFS to, to come up and introduce our, our new contract manager. Uh, for the custodial services, uh, Mr. Nick Marshall. Thanks, Mayor. Good evening. As you know, my name is Mark Hans, and I'm the contract manager. I'm here today and this evening to introduce Nick Marshburn as our project manager. Uh, I've known for a couple of months we needed a different tier of management here. And, uh, Nick is someone that I've known for 20 years. Um, his family's from here. I took quite a convincing um, bit of time to get him to come down here, but I'm, I'm glad to introduce him. He doesn't really have a lot of experience in our industry. I didn't necessarily want someone that had experience. I wanted someone that could manage people and manage systems and processes. So with that, I'm going to introduce Nick Marshman. Uh, I say, first of all, very thankful for the opportunity, uh, Mark and Pender County. As he said, I do have ties, close ties to the area. I'm not from the area, but um, 
my dad and my wife are, are from the area. My dad and his twin brother, they graduated from Bird Hall High, you know, before Bird Hall. And so, um, they're from an area called Pinhook, so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, to, to, but, but that's, that's, that's where my, you know, my wife's from and, and my dad's from, and so uh, I'm excited for the opportunity and, and, and said things need to get fixed, and I'm very impressed with the, the people that I've met so far, whether it's Darren or the principals or some of our staff, but, but on y'all, when I say y'all side, the principals, uh, it, it, the level of, of um, whether the people, they want to help us. They want to help AFS. I can tell that they, they want to help us, you know, so. I think it's all going to be good. We're gonna, I think you'll see uh, improvements quickly. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Look forward to meeting up with everybody and working with them. Any, any questions? Thank you. Any questions, board members? I have a question. Um, we've had a lot of concerns, as you probably have already heard, the reason why you're here is um, that our schools, you know, to have a uh, clean environment is essential. Um, have you visited all the schools so far, or I don't know how long you've been on the job yet? I, I started uh, last week, and I've, I've been to several schools. I've met some, some of the principals here. Actually, I've already met. Um, so, no, but that's absolutely something that I'll be very present. I'll be very available. Uh, Anybody that's, they'll, they'll know me well, and I think you'll see that I'm, I'll try to make every single board with me. I'll, 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 I'll be very present. I can I, that. I'm just speaking for myself, not for the entire board, but I know I personally would like to see, um, after you visit our schools, some kind of plan of action, what your, what your vision is, so we can get these schools back up to par. I know we've it's a labor shortage in all the markets, but um, these schools have to be cleaner than... I mean, I want them to be just like they would be. It should, be, it should be a problem. Yeah. I mean, I'm not from the industry, and from what I've seen, um, that's what I'm being. I'm shocked, actually, at the willingness of, of y'all to, to, to help us. So, okay, um, we'll get it done. It's, it's, we'll get. I, I mean, the fact that we have to talk about it, you know. We'll yeah, I mean, that's all. <laughs> I, I hope we never have to see right. it after. But yeah, I thank you, Miss Burns. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. welcome. Thank you. Center District Cayuga, you ever say that recognition? Yes, Good evening again, board members. Um, this time I'd like to invite uh, Robbie Woody and Richard Smith up from uh, Center District to present and, uh, to us a, a, a award and recognition for energy savings uh, since 2017. Good evening, board, and good evening, um, Pender County. Um, it's a delight to be here. I'm Robbie Woody, um, client development for Synergistic here in North Carolina, and with me is my colleague, Carrie Du Bois. And we're so excited to be here tonight because we too have recognition and we like to bring good news and uh, appreciate you letting us have time. We certainly want to recognize Darren LaFon, the Chief Operations Officer, and your energy specialist here in the district, Rich Smith, at this time as we talk about the Energy Stewardship uh, Recognition for Pender County. So on behalf of Synergistic, we want to recognize you um, with this Energy Stewardship Award. And as Darren said, this started back in 2017. And um, the board made a decision to implement an innovative organizational behavior-based energy conservation and management program. And boy, has it paid off. You're going to be excited, right? Through the efforts of the district in partnership with Synergistic, we can recognize a few things, but I want to call it just three tonight. Um, it's been a positive impact on the environmental that's equal to 40,119,616 miles not driven by the average car. So a huge environmental impact with the savings you're doing with energy conservation. It's also um, can be said that it was 263,000. 961 pine trees for <coughs> uh, 10 years. So we love that here in North Carolina. But hugely, I love this one, that in Pender County, since you've started with Synergistic and working on your energy conservation, there's been a 40% energy use reduction. These accomplishments are significant and can only be realized through the intentional efforts, support, and the cooperation of administration, staff, faculty, and students. 
the district should be very proud of these accomplishments. So Dr. Hill and Darren, we'd like you to come forward at this time, and the board chair, Mr. George, we want to recognize you. We have a great um, plaque that you can um, place here in the district, and we also have a banner, and we'd love for everyone to give them a great big round of applause. Come get in the picture. We recognize everybody. You know it's a team Fawn, North Carolina NCDPI bus inspection report. That's what I'm very proud of. Uh, board members, uh, I'd like to ask uh, our transportation director, Mr. Brandon Smith, to come up and uh, share some good news with you. We're very proud of the transportation department uh, and their annual inspection report. And I, I don't want to steal his thunder, so I'll let him talk to you. Good evening, board members. Um, in February, DPI conducted their annual review of the um, Center County Schools um, bus maintenance program. Um, this is really the first real review we've had since the COVID pandemic. Um, there's three parts to that inspection. There's the um, fleet inspection, and then they um, observe one of our mechanics actually doing an inspection, and then there's the administrative side or parts and inventory side of the inspection. Um, the school bus inspection, they choose 10% of your fleet, so they choose 10 of our buses. They um, go through them with a fine tooth comb, and the best way I can explain it to you is like playing golf. The lower the score, the better off we are. So, usually pin the range between 30 and 40 points every year, and this year our score for the yellow bus fleet was 36. So we were, uh, I'm very impressed with that. Um, they also inspect two of our activity buses, and this is one thing that, I was, um, that I'm really proud of, is that we usually average around 70 points. This year we averaged 13 and a half. So we, um, I was very, you know, very impressed by that score. Ms. Fafon was also, so we're, we're, we're proud that our activity bus fleet received that better rating this year. Um, of the technician that was observed, he was given a satisfactory rating, so that means our technicians are following the manual as they should when they're inspecting our buses every 30 days, or at least that one is, but, but, um, but we, 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 were, we were happy with that. Um, our um, <clears throat> maintenance records as far as our monthly inspection schedule, preventive maintenance, paperwork, and physical inventory was all found satisfactory, so we're, um, we're happy that that all turned out well. Satisfactory is the highest score they can get. Yeah. So that being all said, I think this review shows how how much uh, how hard and hard the hard work and dedication that our bus mechanics, transportation staff, bus drivers, administrators, everybody put into ensuring that our kids have a safe way to and from school. So if y'all don't have any questions, that's all I have. Can you uh? Tell us about the rodeo. The rodeo. The bus rodeo is coming back this year. We had one in 2019, I believe. No, yeah, 2019. Um, it is a competition um, obstacle course that drivers um, complete. They're scored on um, the mastery of that course. So they get points like if they, they bump into something, they lose points and so forth and so on. So they're supposed to get the higher score in that competition. So we're having one next Monday. We would love for everyone to come. New Hanover County's coming and Brunswick. So we've got about 30 total drivers participating. 
Um, and we're looking for a sort of great day of fun and it's really there's no cost to the drivers or anything and um, I'm sure Miss Montana's heard of the bus radios right. in the past. They used to start to be, nine. Start, um, the rodeo will start at 9.30, registration starts at 8.30 at yeah. Heidi Trask. So, so please it's, train, it's more or less a training type event. As it, it, is, it is, it is, it um, is. It shows their, it shows the skills that the drivers have across the state. You know, I, just, I like things to have a practical purpose, so that's my only reason for, sounds like it does. So. And it's a good, great morale booster too. The, the drivers get in, you know. Um, you know, meet other drivers from other districts. So we, we're looking forward to that. So. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Mr. Smith, just one question, and congratulations, by the Thank way. You. Um, how many buses do you have on the road on any given day running routes? 97 right now. 97? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. sir. Board members, we are at the consent agenda. You've had a chance to review the consent agenda. We made an amendment to it. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion that we approve it. Mr. Charles made the motion. Is there a second? A second. Montana second. All in favor say aye. 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 10.1, Alexa, contract for required later training. Everything's got to be accurate now. Board members, in your packet, um, you should have received um, a brief synopsis of the executive summaries of those 10.1, 10.2, and 10.3. But before you do that, I want to um, go in. Oh, I was like, she was back there. <laughs> I'm going to have her um, start off before we go into that part. I'd like to start this evening with a, a video that kind of um, uh, demonstrates what we are learning through our letters, our pre-letters training, and um, to show our excitement over the new things that's coming for our teachers.
Um, we've talked about that. And so this really provides that foundation of the why. Why should we be treating this way? And then how we should be treating. And it's so powerful. So many things that we've read, I've, I've been able to immediately try as a mom, just out of curiosity. And I mean, it, it sold it to me. She literally just took off with her instruction and reading, and um, I just have seen her blossom. By nature, we are nurturers. Teachers are nurturers, and we, we, we want to just kind of wrap our arms around those kids, but they are capable of so much. Perfect. And I think this program, along with appropriate resources, putting them in the hands of teachers, is going to increase that success, and I think we're going to see it um, almost immediately. Chairman, board members, thank you for your time this evening so that we can share not only our excitement but some further information that we have um, uh, regarding science of reading where we are right now. Just to recap or revisit our um, presentation in February, science of reading, it is the umbrella under the Senate Bill of 387. Um, and the science of reading is the evidence-based reading instruction practice that, um, that can be differentiated to meet the needs and, and help the success of all of our students. Our vision, our vision for the science of reading is to provide teachers with the necessary training and the resources grounded in the science of reading to promote reading achievement in students and, of course, to meet all of the mandates. With the implementation of science of reading, our teachers are going to gain knowledge of how students learn to read and write. They're also going to get more about measuring and predicting student growth, as well as an increased ability to differentiate teaching and learning to promote reading success in all of our students. Teachers will be offered some incentives, uh, licensure renewal along with some CEUs, there will be building capacity among all of our educators in increasing student achievement, the implementation of consistent resources across the district, coaching support, and we're also implementing the train the trainer model to be utilized to provide sustainability in our district for years to come. The resources we offer must be approved by DPI through our early literacy intervention plan that um, must be submitted annually now. They must align with read to achieve expectations, and they must be in the hands of teachers to fully implement the science of reading requirements. Our action plan, what we have in place and what we're working on, uh, we have our date set for the 22-23 calendar. Um, we have a kickoff on August 22nd, and that will be followed by four additional unit training dates. We're putting together an informational video for all of our staff so they know the, the, the what, the why, the when, the where, and the how. Um, we're planning training day events to help support all of our staff and, and to try to add a little fun to those days as well. Um, we are uh, revising our literacy plan. This year we did submit a literacy plan that came back with just feedback. There was no approval or denial process with it. Uh, we have received that back with feedback, so we already have a literacy plan committee date set so that we can um, use that feedback to update that plan and have it submitted to DPI on August 1st for the next school year. We're also working to provide support and sustainability for the implementation of letters training, to provide required professional development resources, and to provide the necessary resources in order for teachers to implement the science of reading fully. <clears throat> if you noticed in the video, um, I just have to say this is another opportunity to show where Pender, you set yourself apart from other districts in the region. And when I say that, because that video was your own people. 
those who are your in-house experts who are doing great things for kids. And I think that's the important piece. So when Ms. Owens did her presentation, she had each one of those, if you didn't recognize that, but each slide, it said vision, it said skills, it said incentives, it said resources, action plan. And then when all those are filled in, what do we have? Success. We have success. But what happens when you're implementing a major change, as we are now in the district with literacy instruction? We're moving from a balanced literacy approach to inc incorporating a phonics-based program as well. With the science of reading, knowing science of reading legislation's there, it's law, we have to follow it, whether we like it or not. Um, I will have to say it's almost has been an unfunded mandate that we have to figure out how to make this happen. And smart people on the team, we're making it happen. But what I wanted to um, close with is, if you notice, say for example, the vision's missing, from this whole implementation, what do we have from everybody? Confusion. If skills are missing from the people, the teachers, they need the resources, they need the um, professional development to become better teachers of teaching reading. If that's missing, folks are what? They're anxious, they're feeling, okay, what do I do next? What do I do next? But you get the picture. So I wanted to close by that because it sums up um, the need for those three contracts that we are asking for your approval. And I know you're like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money. Folks, it is a lot of money. But I will tell you, this is the best money you will spend because this is the time to do it for kids now. Teachers need those resources in their hands. So they're getting that, one, that practical application through the training, the letters training, and then they're able to do that work and then it's going, to be, it's going to be a great opportunity. So before you, the first one was the Alexia contract. Again, you're going above the letters training. The state's paying for most of the personnel, but the district has done a great job of um, pre-planning ahead. They're including additional um, staff members to help with, to get that training, to help support students. The second one is the foundations, the Wilson model, and that is, again, the request. Um, it's looking at part of the K-3 literacy plan, but it also is the part in core instruction that teaches the explicit phonics piece that we need to make sure that's happening. And then the third one is the geodes, the great minds, of course, with um, that you need those decodable texts in your classrooms to make that phonics instruction happen. So um, teachers are able to pull small groups and work on those instructional skills. So I stand before you. Um, with your blessing to um, approve those and answer any questions that you may have. Is there any questions, board members? So these are three separate ones, so we're going to do it three separate times, so it may take a second. No we'll worries, Betsy, a question before we go. Sure. I think this, Betsy, this Esser's money, uh -huh. it says Esser 3 funds, PRC 181, where does that originate? Well, I mean, it's federal funds that comes, yeah. you know, from Raleigh. What was the, the Dr. Bracey, the the local, I may have just misunderstood you. What okay. what local involvement do we have money-wise with this? Local, is there any, from the local you know this too, it's a, okay. so all the funds are paid for from ESSERS. That's for correct. This. Okay. For this implementation. Well, that's our little wealth, there's some coming from And there, there's wealth. some 31. All right, let's just stop. Uh, that's, that's state low wealth. Yes, yeah, state yeah. low Okay, good. No, no good. local local funds. Is good. good. That's what I. Yeah. yeah no fund too. Or. Mr. No, yeah. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. If there's no other discussion, to approve the funding two hundred eighty-six thousand one hundred eleven dollars and ninety-nine cent with tax for the one year paid out of for three funds PRC one eighty-one. Uh, for the Wilson program contract training materials. So we got to go back to the other one first. Mm -hmm. we'll we'll let's, put that. Let's, put let's do this from the Alexia first. Take yeah, Alexia the training. Well, let's then um, amend, change that. So is there let's a motion for fifty-four thousand seven hundred eight dollars and twenty-six cents coming from low wealth funds for the Alexia training? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. second. All kinds of seconds. You getting it? <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. And now, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now I go back to the motion of um, of the dollar amount to two sixty eight eleven one eleven ninety nine for the extra three funds for the Wilson program contract training materials. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? 
No. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Let me get the last one opened up here. Geodes, yeah, great lines. And the last one for geodes for the total of four hundred and twenty thousand ninety dollars and seven cent. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. There's a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Board members, we are now at the uh, proposed 22-23 calendar schedule. Is there a motion to approve it? The proposed schedule? I make a motion to approve the pros calendar schedule as presented. A second. Second. Any discussion? There is one discussion item I have, and it's just for the discussion only. It has been requested that we kind of maybe once or twice a year go to different parts of the county. Um, one being Pender High School, and possibly one at in Hampstead to kind of. So not, not change any of the dates, but maybe if we can get together and decide on which ones would be the, the best ones to do that. And also, I guess the July meeting is just a placeholder. But, okay. No other discussions there. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. Mr. LaFon. Airmark Renewal. Good evening, board members. It's um, uh, Airmark's contract is up for renewal. Uh, the, the way that it works, it's a one-year contract with four one-year options for the uh, Board of Education. Um, at this time, I would like to recommend that the board approve Airmark as the food service provider for Bigger County Schools for the 2022-2023 school year. Is there a motion to approve the contract extension? I'll make the motion to uh, approve the contract extension. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? None discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. No. I'll be a aye. Thank you, Mr. Wolfong. Thank you. Can we, can we back back up to 10.5 for one second, though? Can we move that renewal earlier than the, this date next year so we're not right at the end of the year? Absolutely. I mean, is that possible, Mr. Turner? Yes, sir. So can we put that on the agenda for possibly December? Is that too early? It's never too early, and I and I'll tell you why. You're going to have a new finance officer, and you're, if the board chooses to do an RFQ, you should probably be having that conversation in, um, I'd say October. Absolutely. To be honest with you, I, I mean, Miss Ch Chestnut, you do you agree? October or oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. It takes forever. Just being here as long as I probably too long. I just know it's, it would be hard to make that change this late in the school year if we. Well, it would be almost impossible to put out an RFP at this point in time to get it back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, so if we can get that somehow noted where it pops up on so the calendar earlier. Note to add to the October 2022 agenda. I'll make a note. Yeah. Sure. 10.6 RFQ for architects for K-8 school. Dr. Hill. Yes, sir. Um, we were, as we moved through the bond process, we were trying to figure out ways to maybe get it there faster once the vote takes place. Uh, so it was in discussion with legal that we possibly look at an RFQ situation. Luckily, Mr. McPherson was familiar with this and actually had one almost completed in hand. So we were able to get that to you quickly. It's in your packet for review. Uh, basically what this does is ask people to submit their resume for qualification and you will have those up front. You won't have to wait that time period to seek out people when that, hopefully that time comes to start construction. Good morning, there's no calls to us other than the him drafting it and us advertising it at this time. It's just, this is just to get them on board so hopefully we'll be ready to roll at the 
time and date occurs. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion that we approve the RFQ for architects for our K-8 school. There's a second. Second a motion. All those approved to that. Aye. Aye. 10.7 Wall of Fame. Is there a motion to approve the Wall of Fame for the uh, Pender Educational Partners project? I make a motion that we approve the Wall of Fame. Is there a second? Second a motion. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Comments from board members? Ms. Burns. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm sure that everybody who has gone down Highway 17 in front of Topsail Elementary School has noticed the uh, very bright black and um, lime green playground equipment that was just put out there. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to the Topsail Elementary, Elementary PTA. Um, they had a goal this year and it was a big goal and it was that playground equipment is not cheap. Um, they raised through corporate sponsors and through a booster thon $55,000 to put that playground equipment in. Uh, a couple of weeks ago it was installed. Every time I go by there, there's kids out there playing on it. I just, um, when I see PTAs go out and do big things like this, I feel it needs to be recognized. So I called, um, I called their, um, their PTA president, Laura Nicholson, and I uh, asked her if she would um, give me a list of all of the officers because I used to serve on that PTA back when my son was there. And um, so their PTA officers are Laura Nicholson, Courtney Fowler, Karen Ogulnik, Tiffany Graham, Amy Meisel, Christy Lee, and Melissa Williamson. And uh, on the end of her email, she wrote, together we soar, because they are the Ospreys. So again, good job. And um, also to South Topsail PTO, who purchased six interactive smart touched boards for their schools. Um, and all the school, and earlier in the school year, they had paid for all of their students' um, school supplies at the beginning of the year. So a shout out to them. Um, also this past week, and I'll wrap this up real quick. Um, this past week, I had the pleasure to attend the EC prom this past Friday. And I just wanted to say, EC department, you did a beautiful job with that. It looked great. It was wonderful. You had magicians, you had princesses, you um, had a caricature artist. I mean, it was, and I know that you did that with a very, very short turnaround time. And I just wanted to recognize that beautiful job and you made a lot of kids very happy that day um, also there was an autism awareness walk at Pila I attended that it was so sweet and I've been wanting to make it out to Pila finally got out there and <coughs> I just wanted to like I said just give a shout out to a lot of deserving people who've been working very hard thank you so much thank you mr. chair thank you ma'am mr. Hall uh, this is for Aramark in the room. Let me just say the reason I voted no is because I continue to get complaints from people nearly every day. I understand there's issues with availability and things like that, but just let me encourage you to work on that. It sounds like you're trying to. So I just, uh, it's pretty safe to say that another year without improvement, I doubt the same result will happen as it did today. Um, so, I, again, I'm not trying to pick on you. I just, I have to hear this every day, every single day. So, but I appreciate y'all what you do do and just try to, you know, just try to, just try to see what you can do to make it better. And that's it. Thank you. Ms. Fontana? Uh, just to tag on what Mr. Hall just said, uh, the reason I voted like I did, I just want you guys to know is that I did reach out to Aramark about a situation um, you know, when you're a parent, you have children who talk about everything that goes on. And my child, who eats all the time, um, had expressed concerns, and I reached out to them, and they got on it immediately and handled it. And I um, just want to give you guys that chance to continue to do those things. That's all I have. Mr. Smith? Yes, sir. Um, 
I just want to encourage if you, um, I think they're still in the room. Is um, Brandon Smith still here? I guess he took one of the school buses and left. <laughs> uh, if you see Brandon Smith, um, as Ms. Burns asked how many buses there are on the road, he said, I think he said 90 some buses, 97. Uh, his birthday is on the 22nd, so I definitely want us. Um, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that we never see. Make sure you wish him a happy birthday. And also, there's another guy that's sitting in here, and um, he made sure to be here for this. Uh, Mr. Darren LaFon, his birthday is two days earlier on the 20th. And so I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. And uh, there's a lot of uh, thankless things I know you do that we never see. Um, you mostly get us when it's complaints, uh, but you do seem to be able to be on top of it. So thank you again. Uh, two final things. One, over at West Pender, Ms. Sylvia Wilkins and uh, Mr. Hudson, the principal, uh, they did an outstanding job on their West Pender Middle School Career Fair. If um, any of you that saw that, there was a video produced uh, on YouTube, and I encourage you to go look at that. But the West Pender um, Middle School Career Fair was back in swing and, and was large, and they did a great job with it. A final recognition tonight that I wanted to do is for the Pender High School JROTC team. They earned out of 1,942 Army JROTC academic teams that competed around the world, there were only uh, one of 32 that were chosen to uh, that won and will actually be doing final competitions in the next um, few months in Washington, D.C. And um, I, when I went and visited the program this past week and talked to uh, Sergeant Major, uh, only three schools in North Carolina uh, have this honor of being uh, chosen as an academic. Uh, and so it's, it's a very challenging, and uh, so I want to say personally, uh, thank you for uh, the staff at Penn High School and especially the JROTC team for academic honors uh, because we are, we're very proud of what they're doing. So thank you all of you again for what you're doing and saying. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> so I just want to take a couple of seconds. Um, so last week we had an old school bomb threat at Pender High School. We went back old school retro. And it was amazing to, to hear it all unfold, how the school reacted, how uh, Malpas Corner reacted, how our staff at Pender High School reacted, how the Sheriff Department reacted, and got the students off the campus and into a safe environment as quick, quickly as they did. Seven minutes. That's pretty impressive. So to all those that made that happen, congratulations. Thank you. The training and the, and the time that, that paid off. That was that was good. I hate we had to try it, but it was I'm glad to see it worked. Um, Ms. Conway spoke tonight about the cleanliness of our schools. And as Mr. Hall said, he hears about Airmark every day. I hear about the cleanliness of our schools every day. And hopefully we're on a a path now with a new area manager to correct that. Um, I encourage the principals to continue, you know, if make sure the work orders are turned in and the complaints are, are sent to Darren. He's got unlimited e uh, email. He, he, there's no there's no limit on how much he can take. We need to know that because when I talk to, talk to teachers in the school, they said they see the same things over and over and over every day. And when I, when I talk to people that are renting our facilities and we're pay, they're paying a humongous cleaning fee and they're having to clean it themselves and they're complaining about it and, and it's continually happened, somebody's not getting the message. So I encourage you to continue. You can even copy me on it if you want to, um, of the complaints and the concerns. But we have to get our school, we have to do better. I mean, some of the pictures I see coming out of there after at seven o'clock in the morning, it's just it's, it's really disgusting. So um, that's all I had, uh, Mr. McPherson. Uh, good evening, board. Uh, given the rise in uh, book challenges, uh, I wanted to talk very quickly. Uh, about uh, what the law is in North Carolina regarding book challenges, as Mr. Blumenreich sort of uh, laid it out uh, very gently. But I felt, uh, given some comments that we've heard 
uh, recently and the national rise in uh, book challenges that uh, you and the public know what the law is in North Carolina. It's very clear. Um, North Carolina General Statute 115C 80 or 98 subsection B1 uh, outlines very clearly that there are three reasons why uh, supplemental or instructional material can be challenged. And um, for those uh, members of the board who recently served on a panel, this will be a refresher for you guys because you already know this. Um, but I want to review it quickly, uh, which is uh, the instructional materials are educationally unsuitable. So that's the first one. Uh, pervasively vulgar. That's number two. And the third one is inappropriate to the age, maturity, or grade level of the students. So those are the grounds laid out by general statute that a board um, or a school could uh, reject uh, material. Uh, once again, as Mr. Blumerich said, the local board of education at all times has sole authority and discretion to determine whether a challenge to material is with merit and whether the challenge material could be retained or removed. Uh, the caveat I will put on that is uh, while you do have the unfettered discretion um, based on general statute, there is also a body of case law uh, through the U.S. Supreme Court that allows a pathway for individuals who want to challenge any decision that this board makes to um, eliminate a book uh, from its collection. Uh, but once again, the law is very clear in North Carolina about your ability. Uh, it's if someone wanted to challenge you in federal court about that discretion. At the end of the day, um, you have three reasons that are based off of the Supreme Court. This law did not come out of nowhere. It was built after uh, the Supreme Court case, uh, Pico versus Board of Education, which was based out of uh, a 1973 case. Um, so uh, here we are. Uh, I believe that um, we are going to see more uh, book challenges and curricular challenges in the future. Um, they are on the rise. So I commend this board and this administration for taking the step uh, to start preparing um, a uh, committee of stakeholders to address these concerns moving forward. Um, with that being said, the last thing I'll mention is that the legislative short session will begin on May 4, 2022. So uh, if there are needs or concerns, I recommend contacting your state legislators sooner rather than later. Um, because they're, my understanding is they're going to try to keep short session short this year. So, uh, Mr. Chair, that is all I have for this evening. Thank you, sir. And while we're discussing this, the book thing, the topic did come up about a link from our school website mm -hmm. to our libraries. Mm -hmm. And we researched that, and there is no link that directs anyone from our district website to any library in Hunter County Schools. The lady tonight mentioned a website called Follett, and she claims that this is where she can find out what books is. I've looked at that website, and there is no link to any book on that website. It talks, you can get a job with them, and you can be a salesman, and they tell you about all the career opportunities and the retail jobs that they offer and their warehouse jobs, but there's, there's no link to any book at any one of Pender County Schools on that website. It's very unfortunate that sometimes things get expanded a lot bigger than they should. And like I tried to explain to the lady earlier this week, it, it hurts it hurts the district when those when things like that that's not true and that they take to a new crusade get out. But I can assure you that we take every everybody's concerns. If they call me, email me. We take those concerns, we review them, and we ask questions. And, and we did that with these concerns that they had earlier this week. So that's all I had. We, do, we don't have a link. We do have a link off of our website to the Pender County Branch Library. Um, but as far as a link to our in-house libraries, no. Dr. Hill? I'll follow up that, Mr. George. Uh, while we were here, I actually had that book researched, the one she read from. There is no circulation statistics for that book. 
in our in our school system. And there, I even said, pull the checkout list. There's none, none. It's, there's none, zero to check out. That book is not in circulation in the, in the Pender County schools. So does that mean that we don't? But do we have it? It came. It, that book is delivered with a packet. Pulled, okay. Not in circulation in the school system. Okay. Never been checked out. Never been touched by a student in Pender County schools. So if it's not in circulation, but does that mean to keep it out of circulation that it's got to go through this committee? No, no sir. Okay. Uh, also, on a happier note, uh, April is Military Child Month. So you see a lot of purple stars out in front of schools. That's what you're looking at. So just want to thank all the principals, administrators, the staff out there that's really doing a great job. Um, actually get a lot of accolades from the military. They're extremely satisfied with the school district and very happy to be part of it with their families. And other than that, you guys just have a great, great Easter weekend. Hope you enjoy it with your family. Board members, that concludes our regular meeting. Is there a motion for closed session? Oh, Tom's got County Board of Education will enter closed session subject to advice from the attorney pursuant to NC General Statute 143-318.11A1 and A6 to prevent the disclosure of confidential personnel information under GS 115C-319 and to consider matters relating to the initial employment of an individual employee. The board will also go into closed session pursuant to the General Statute 143 dash 318.11 a3 to consult with the board's attorney in order to preserve the attorney client privilege to consider confidential student matters as provided in general nc general statute 143.318.11 a1 and the family educational rights and privacy act 20 usc 1232g and nc general statute 115c-402 to establish or instruct staff or agents concerning the terms of a contract or proposed contract for the acquisition of real property as provided in NC General Statute 143-318.11A5 and to consider and give instructions to the board's attorney concerning Burns Fisher versus Pender County Board of Education et al. So the motion is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. We're in closed session.
County. Board members, is there a motion to come out of closed session? Make a motion to come out of closed session. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Or is there a motion to accept the HR report and addendum? Make a motion to accept the HR report and addendum as presented. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Board members, is there a motion to accept the summer school uh, list as presented? Make said motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.